I believe, you believe, we believe in the God who is love, who has a magnificent taste for the impossible. He loves the way that tastes. And this is the beauty and the power of our faith. And in the faithless age that we live in, they want us to taste everything else so that we forget what the impossible tastes like. Hello and welcome to Catholic Focus. Today we're looking for inspiration and encouragement in one another as we enter into our Lenten journeys so that we can make the best of this time that we have to grow closer to Christ. Joining us today to share their thoughts are some very familiar faces from Salt and Light, Chris Dimitrenko, Mary Rose Bacani, and Matthew Harrison. Thank you all so much for being with me today. Thank Thanks, you, Mary. Recently, a few of us had the privilege of spending an evening of Lent with Father Stan Fortuna. This was held at Mary Mother of God Parish in Oakville. Now, those of you who aren't familiar with Father Stan, he's a very well, world-renowned Franciscan priest from the Bronx who's known for his work for the poor and the marginalized. He's also very well known for his charismatic personality and his musical gifts. We're gonna be sharing with you today some of the highlights of his Lenten talk, which were mostly inspired by Pope Benedict XVI's Lenten letter, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I was also quite inspired by this letter, especially the first part, because I think it really helped me to enter into the proper focus that I needed, because usually we tend to think right away about sacrifice and looking inwards to ourselves. But Benedict really invites us, first of all, to enter into the awareness of God's love. And this really, really struck me, and especially Father Stan. I know, Mary Rose, you were also very struck by Father Stan's talk, because he really describes this, this, this love of the, of the Father. Well, I'm somebody who really looks at visual. So when he mentioned the example of his love being like a torrential downpour, the rain just beating hard on you, and you can't run away from it, even if you have nine umbrellas all around you. And that made a huge difference in my understanding of God's love, because it's just, he mentioned three adjectives too. It's lavish. It just keeps on being profuse. Um, and the other one was prodigal. It's like God wasting his love on us, just as the skies waste water on us by, you know, by there being rain. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of God is constantly loving us, constantly, we're, if we could see it, we're constantly wet, you know, because of that rain, like that love that keeps on pouring down on us. So that visually, Father Stan helped me understand, have a deeper grasp of the meaning of God's love. Mm -hmm. He also talked about this element of mad eros. And for me, this was really new because when you think of God's love, you think of agape, unconditional love. But you can argue that this isn't something that we experience in our earthly relationships, unconditional love. It's impossible. But eros, we all get eros. And it reminds me of that song, Crazy in Love. And all these different songs about love talk about this love that's undeserved. And that's certainly the love that God has for us expressed in Christ. And as well, it's, it's something that's very impatient. There's this urgency of God wanting to be with us right now. And, and to me, I, I find that really powerful, even romantic, you could say. It, it really is some wonderful imagery. And the words agape and eros, really what Father Stan was saying with the mad eros, I thought of the, uh, the Holy Father's uh, letter for Lent. And there was a particular part where he talks about Christ thirsting and wanting to be united with us, and he thirsts for souls, and he thirsts for our love, and he wants to lavish it, lavish it upon us. It's really some beautiful imagery. Thank you for bringing that up, because it also made me think of um, Pope Benedict's first encyclical, actually, where he actually goes on and on about this, this eros, this, this concept of God's love. Mary Rose, I know that you were very familiar with this, with this encyclical. Now, was there anything that struck you in it about God's love? Well, the, the images that he uses from Scripture, just the example of um, the bride and groom, the example of Hosea, the prophet, longing after the one that he loves, the prostitute that he loves. It's like God, at the same time with the example that Chris and Matt brought up, like um, that mad era was where he wants our love so badly, mm -hmm. but he keeps on lavishing love anyway. He doesn't need that love, but he constantly asks for it, at the same time not needing it. Mm -hmm. So that was really what struck me there. Now, do you think, any of you guys can comment, do you think this could be very comparable to, like you were saying, a relationship between two people, like wanting to give love, but also waiting for that reciprocation of love. Would you compare that to God's love? Certainly I would. I mean, I think any relationship, there's an, there's a, an exchange of love between the two 
you give and you want to receive as well. And God gives unconditionally. And he, actually this is also what really struck me about the letter, is that he wants our love so badly, so badly that he would give his son for us. It's a wonderful expression of love. And to see that this is sacrifice given for us just because he loves us unconditionally and wants us to be united with him, it's beautiful. And, and of course, being God, he doesn't even need our yes. love in return, and yet he still wants that, which is, which is remarkable, because we certainly need his. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. We're going to take a quick break and go to Father Stan, who shares his thoughts on entering into the awareness of God's love. And isn't it interesting that our beautiful Bavarian Benedict, the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, wants us to learn this Lent, how to stay close, how to stay close. Listen to what he says. Lent is a favorable time to learn to stay close to him who on the cross consummated for all mankind the sacrifice of his life. Christ crucified, who dying on Calvary revealed fully for us the love of God. to learn how to stay close. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 31, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he is killed and after three days he will rise. You know what Pope Benedict said about this? He said, is there a more mad eros than that which led the Son of God to make himself one with us even to the point of suffering as his own? the consequences of our offenses? <laughs> is, he said, is there a more mad arrow? He's like he's saying, is there a more crazy love than God wanting to do this for us? That's why Lent is an amazing time for us because it's a time for us to really, to, to look at the cross, to look at, at, at Christ, and, and I love the way that our Holy Father, the great Pope John Paul II, my hero, on June 29th in 1999, I love the way that he described the cross. He said that the cross, which seems to rise up from the earth, in actual fact, reaches down from heaven, enfolding the universe in a divine embrace. The cross reveals itself to be the center of, the meaning and the goal of all history and of every human life. This is really, really, really incredible. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way for us to look at the cross. And you know, John Paul again, back in 1997, looks at the gospel and he sees the gospel as presenting the earthly life of Jesus as a marriage of love between God and humanity. Welcome back. That was Father Stan Fortuna sharing his thoughts on Pope Benedict's Lenten letter, which is what we're talking about today. Now, in the second part, he starts to talk about how to respond to this love. He says, accepting his love is not enough. We need to respond to such love and devote ourselves to communicating it to others. And later he says, only in this way will we be able to participate fully in the joy of Easter? Chris, on this theme of loving others or loving our neighbors as ourselves, what line was it that really stuck with you? Well, for me, it was when the Pope was saying that, that fundamental to our experience of Lent is coming out of ourselves. And on an initial level, that would be moving away from self-interest, but I think it's more than that. If, uh, if you look at Luke 10, with the parable of the Good Samaritan, you've got a Levite and a priest who when they see someone who's dying on the road, they decide to just cross to the other side of the road and, and thereby not having responsibility anymore. And certainly with what the church is telling us is that our responsibility doesn't just lie with, with ourselves, doesn't just lie with our families or our communities, but it's something that's truly global. And we see this with all the ways that we're supposed to give to, to missions. And really, when you think about it, it's only in the 20th century that you start seeing nations recognize that they have obligations towards other nations that are more than just their own concerns. And yet the church has been teaching this from the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, I, can I add something too? I was thinking, um, 
as I mentioned, Father Stan really hits home and so at some points. Um, related to what you said um, about caring for others, like not having that self-interest, um, Father Stan sort of helped me to understand what that, how that can be achieved. Because he talked about, okay, we talk about loving God, we talk about loving others, but we don't realize or we don't think about the part with love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So for him to get to that loving God and that global aspect, he says, love yourself first. And related to that parable of the Good Samaritan, I think Father Stan would say the reason that Levi did not stop is because he didn't love himself as God loved him, as God loved him. So he didn't see that God loves him so much that he has so much love to give that he could love this poor person on the road. So I think that's how Father Stan would describe that situation. This man did not know how to love his bare self. Now, how do we understand that concept of, of loving self? Because, you know, of course, he's not talking about it in a selfish way. Like, we shouldn't just think about ourselves only. So how do we love ourselves, I guess, more in an illumined sort of way, or the way that God wants us to love ourselves in order to love our neighbor? Well, one way I think about it, um, going back to Father Stan again, when he talks about um, if you realize the love that God has for you, the love that made him come and want to be united to you, your measly self, you know, if you think of it that way, mm -hmm. could you not love yourself and think, I am worth loving? Mm -hmm. Or just even the thought of, he mentioned that Christ says, being neither hot nor cold, I prefer that you're, sorry, I prefer you're either hot or cold and not lukewarm, or I'll, I'll, I'll say vomit you out. And he was saying, well, God loves you so much that he, you are inside of him already. So mm -hmm. could you not, like, just meditating on that? I guess that's the way to do it, meditating on what Christ has done for you. Right. And it's, it's an interesting reminder, too, and it kind of touches on what Chris was saying, is that we are created in the image and likeness of God, and that God, he has come to earth, he died for us, and he rose so that we could be saved, and he's given himself fully, and he says to love one another as I have loved you. And again, it, it's a beautiful imagery, and it's a beautiful instruction to us. Sometimes we forget, and we need some periods like Lent to remind us of it. But it is, it's really something that we should make an effort to embrace in our everyday life. When, when we talk about uh, loving ourselves, I mean, initially we think of loving all the bad things that we do, and clearly that's not what God is, is calling us to do. He's, he's really calling us to, if we talk, talk about love as, as making sacrifices, make sacrifices so that we can become that kind of person that God wants us to be, this image that we have, this potential that we have. And certainly, I think that's very appropriate to Lent because that's what the sacrifices we're making are about. Mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking too, like uh, related to that, but in a sort of different. Uh, for example, one of the things I'm doing this Lent is loving myself in the sense of, do I take care of myself? Mm -hmm. Do I work mm -hmm. way too hard? Do I leave time to be with other people? And in that way, I can, I can say that, okay, I can love myself by treating myself as a human being. You know, because in a way, if I, if I don't know how to treat myself as a human being, how do I expect people I work with to be like, treated like human beings by me? If I demand of them what I demand of myself and I don't treat myself right. Mm -hmm. So in one way, I think God is saying, start with that, you know, like love yourself as a human person loved by me to live a balanced, happy life. Yeah. Hold that thought, Mary Rose. We're going to take another quick break. Back to Father Stan, who shares his thoughts on how to love our neighbors. What's the greatest commandment? They ask Jesus, says, hey, what's the greatest commandment? He says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So if I'm going to really want to love God, and if I'm going to, yes, we want to examine ourselves and we want to catch ourselves in the things that we do wrong, but when are we going to start catching ourselves doing things right so we don't have to settle for an impoverished love? That's what we wind up doing. We wind up settling for an impoverished love. And if you're wondering what the hidden corruption of evil looks like, it looks like that. It looks like that which we don't really recognize most of the time because we can't see it. And most of us really probably really don't want to see it. And I can understand that because on our own power, we do not have what it takes to see it on our own. But that's why we have truth and the light of truth. And the combination of the light of the truth with the burning fire of the love that God is for us, that God has for us, that God wants us to be and God wants us to do, then something will start happening. And then we'll be able to catch ourselves doing something right. Because you know something? The way that you take care of yourself is going to be to wind up the way that, that, that you take care of your neighbor. Maybe. And if you're really in deep, then you know, maybe you know how to take care of yourself. 
and you don't do the same with the neighbor. You know, somebody comes over, oh, you want a cup of tea? Well, I'm not giving you my favorite. I only have two of those left, you know what I mean? I have, I'll give you the lesser version, you know what I mean? Not that you have to go in and, 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 and lose everything every day. No, 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 no. But imagine if that became the standard. What's the standard? You know, how about, did you ever talk to somebody nasty on the phone? Yes, hello. What? You know, oh. You know, and then th are you aware of how you talk on the phone? You know what I mean? And the point is the way that we start taking care of ourselves and the levels of love that we see. You know, I'm not talking about selfishness. I'm talking about an enlightened and an illumined love of self. Because that's going to be the criteria by which the love is going to flow unto the neighbor and that's going to determine the development of the capacity that we have to love God. So if we're going to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and our neighbor as ourself, wow. We're back in studio sharing in our Lenten journey together. Now we talked about entering into the awareness of God's love and then transmitting that love onto others in order to remain close to Christ. Now, Matthew, I want to address you because I've really been enjoying reading your entries in the Salt and Light blog, particularly because I love how you get practical. And Father Stan always says, well, we, we've listened to the Word of God, now let's get practical. So you, you offer a lot of reflections, a lot of practical tools, especially around Lent. So I was wondering, could you share some of those thoughts with us on, on how to get practical, how to put all these ideas that we've talked about into practice? Certainly, and, and I think that's a very important thing that we don't just hear the Word and let it pass, as we were talking about previously about loving our neighbor, we have to put these words and scripture and our faith into action. And for Lent, we have plenty of opportunities to, to fast, to pray, to offer alms. And all these are a means of doing penance so that we can, shall we say, shed the fat, the excess from our life, so that we can come closer to God. And are there other ways uh, outside of fasting that we can really become closer to Christ? For myself, one thing that it's kind of new for me this Lent, is uh, doing things that are spontaneous forms of, of repentance or, or following what God wants me to do. I've always been good at, you know, weeks before Lent coming up with, with something that I'm going to give up for a long term. And then occasionally you'll, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he might tell you something on the spot. Recently I was passing through the neighborhood of, of a relative and, and you know, I didn't really want to go to this relative. I wanted to go home and, and watch television quite selfishly. And yet I still heard this, this little voice, the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that, was, that was really a form of Lenten penance for me. And I'm trying to listen even more closely now. Yeah, I think a lot of people think of Lent and they think of giving things up. Mm -hmm. But there's also things that, other things that you can do, like listening to these promptings or taking things up or on. Like, uh, for instance, maybe trying to make it to daily mass, uh, maybe trying to read more scripture. So it's not necessarily that you have to give things up, but you can try and pick up good habits as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, and as I, um, I had mentioned earlier, that one of the things I'm trying to learn is to love myself the way God loves me. So part of that is enjoying the just creation, like what he's created for me, because that's for me to enjoy. That's a sign of his love for me that he made that. So I'd give myself a surprise kind of date, kind of, you know, for an hour or so during the, <laughs> the week or the weekend. <laughs> And just go out and not plan anything, mm -hmm. but just, you know, see what happens. Almost the same as Chris's, where he passes by the neighborhood of the relative, you know, and gets a thought. I get some inspirations at those times, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy those times. It's like letting God speak to me during this time of Lent. So a time of rest, essentially, in order to take that time to grow closer to Christ. Um, now, going back for an, a minute to that idea of, of sacrifice and giving up material things, because a lot of times I think, um, and I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I don't feel like giving up my chocolate or my, my alcohol or my cigarettes during Lent is really bringing me closer to Christ. Mm -hmm. So what is it that the church offers in terms of teaching? Like, why, why is it that this tradition has been in the church for so long? Well, first of all, I think if someone were to say that to me, I would um, look at the fact that it seems to be a statement filled very much with pride. And that the point of doing penitential uh, practices and, and fasting is that you're humbling yourself. You're humbling yourself and surrendering your will to God, to the, for the love of God. So 
that's one aspect I would think of that, that well, maybe that person's, you know, they're being a little, a little too much self-centered and self-focused. And also, they're saying what they think God wants. And we know very much through the teachings of the magisterium in scripture, um, the fathers of the church, many wise spiritual mystics and spiritual masters over the years have extolled the benefits of fasting and of doing penitential practices. Um, in doing these things, we humble ourselves. We turn more towards God. We enter more fully into what God is giving us and making available to us and so we can respond to him and hear what he is telling us to do. I, I think that you're right, Matthew. I don't think it's a coincidence that there's all these different physical forms of, of repentance during Lent. And it's because, you know, quite frankly, the spiritual and the physical, they're connected. Mm -hmm. To try and separate this with this dualist mentality, I don't think it really represents the reality for, for us of, of exactly. who we were made to be. Exactly. And, and uh, St. Paul writes about the, uh, the flesh and the spirit fighting together and conflicting. And he's not condemning the flesh, certainly, but at times we do have to detain the flesh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're running out of time. Stay with us. We're turning back now to Father Stan Fortuna, who offers practical tools on how to grow closer to Christ during Lent. When was the last time you went to confession? I don't know if I believe in that. I didn't ask you if you believed in it. Well, what if I don't believe in it? Go anyway. Well, why should I go and do something that I don't believe in? Because it's good for you. Well, I went to confession a year ago. Or even if you say, I went to confession on Saturday. <laughs> then did you really confess? What do you mean that I really confess? Of course, I went in, the priest was there. I, I, you know, I did the thing. He gave me the penance. I did the penance. I confessed. What else was there to do? Did you say what you needed to say? What do you mean? Did you take a good look? At what? Maybe there's a few things that you've been like burying deep under the rug. You know, wrap them up in some paper, multiple plastic bags, hid them in the drawer. You know, trying to like forget those things. Did you ever say in confession, which you like, I would never tell no one, not even God. It happens. Well, I've never thought about it before. That's why. Well, I never quite looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe rather conveniently so. Eh? Eh? It's Canadian. Eh? You know? Yeah, but uh, you don't understand. I play golf with the priest. How am I going to go say to him, bless me, Father, if I have sinned? <laughs> you don't even want to know. You know, and then some of you think like, oh, I can't go to confession because the priest will have a heart attack. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> He's heard it before. <laughs> and you know, let me even tell you something else. He might have even thought about it himself. And depending what you're going to confess, he may have done it. Mm -hmm. And if he never heard it before, you think that you're going to shock him? No. You know who you're going to shock? You're going to shock you. And it'll be the best shock of your life. Because that shark, that shock will ignite the spark that will make the fire of the love burn. And that will ennoble you it will not make you feel humiliated or embarrassed but it will ennoble you because the love will fill you and give you a taste of that mad eros that benedict talked about for lent that brings us to the end of our show thank you so much for being here chris mary rose and matthew thanks again and thank you all for tuning in. If you are interested in reading Pope Benedict's letter for yourselves, you can do so on the Vatican website at www.vatican.va. Just before leaving, we're going to leave you with one last taste of Father Stan's musical talents. And until then, we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful Lenten journey. Your beauty is there in all I see. And when I feel Sometimes you just take my breath away. But since my life is yours, my heart will be singing for you eternally. Sometimes you just take my Two.
See you.